Hi, I'm Lynette from PanicAttackRecovery.com. We're a collaboration of former sufferers who are helping current sufferers of anxiety, panic attacks, and agoraphobia. If you're a consumer of caffeine and a panic attack or anxiety sufferer, then you might consider this video to be an important one. To begin, what are the effects of caffeine? Caffeine's effects include stimulation of the central nervous system, CNS, and stimulation of cardiac muscle. It's been suggested that caffeine can lead to the jitters, headaches, irritability, confusion, muscle aches, heartburn, increased blood pressure, and other effects on the body. However, you might be asking the following question. Is there any real connection between caffeine and anxiety? Authors of an article in the Journal of Caffeine Research completed a thorough literature review. The authors indicated that their review showed that caffeine produces behavioral and physiological effects similar to those produced by other drugs of dependence. The article points out that caffeine consumption has been associated with a number of negative health consequences, including anxiety, insomnia, hypertension, myocardial infarction, bladder instability, gastroesophageal reflux, spontaneous abortion, and reduced fetal growth. So, should you consume caffeine? One might be able to consume caffeine in moderation. However, it's important to become aware of all of the foods and drinks that are containing caffeine and to consider the level of caffeine in each of these foods and drinks. For instance, consider the following caffeine levels according to the Mayo Clinic. Brewed cup, eight ounce of coffee, 95 to 200 milligrams. Cola, 30 to 40 milligrams. Black tea, 14 to 61 milligrams. Energy drinks such as Red Bull, 80 milligrams. The Mayo Clinic indicates that you might consider reducing your intake of caffeine if you're consuming more than 500 milligrams of caffeine per day. However, ultimately, we would suggest that you may want to determine your own tolerance levels to caffeine. We certainly don't recommend that you quit caffeine cold turkey if you are trying to quit. If you are trying to cut back, you should gradually reduce your caffeine intake levels instead of making big changes all of a sudden. You should remember that caffeine is a drug, so you may initially go through some withdrawal symptoms when levels are reduced. Withdrawal symptoms have been reported such as headache, irritability, sleeplessness, confusion, nausea, restlessness, and tremor, palpitations, and raised blood pressure. You might be asking how to kick the caffeine habit or reduce the amount of coffee you consume. We would suggest you may want to think about two things. One, become aware of all your sources of caffeine by taking inventory of all of your caffeine levels. And two, consider substituting green tea in place of all or some of your daily coffee. Why green tea? Although green tea has some caffeine, it's not nearly as much as coffee. As mentioned, while a brewed 8 ounce cup of coffee can have about 95 to 200 milligrams of caffeine, green tea has about 14 to 40 milligrams of caffeine only. In addition to subscribing to our YouTube channel, you can visit our website and sign up for our free email newsletter obtain a range of articles about panic attacks, anxiety, and agoraphobia, and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. By taking advantage of these options, you can be assured that you won't be missing out on any of our resources. Please visit our website at panicattackrecovery.com.